Alright, yo, what is up, everybody? Today, I'll be showing you guys some of the easiest and best effects to use in your montage. And before I even start the video, I'm just gonna let you guys know that you are gonna need a few plugins for these effects. You're gonna need Sapphire, BCC, and RG Trap Code. Those are pretty much the standard plugins you're gonna need to use After Effects, so it shouldn't be too much of a hassle getting those. But yeah, without further ado, let's get right into the video. So we're just going to start by creating our new composition and first off, these are my settings. I usually put this at about like 2 minutes so I never run out of time. And put it on 24fps, make sure you're editing on 24fps always. Trust me, it just looks so much better, 1920 by 1080 okay. Alright, so effect number 1 I will be showing you guys is called Film. And basically this is going to be your basis for your like color correction and it overall just has really nice colors with it. So first thing that you're going to do is you are going to create an adjustment layer, which is Control alt y and it creates it just like that. And you're not going to need to do any splitting to it, just like this, you're just going to have it like that. And you're going to type in F-I-L-M, film, and it should be right under RG Magic Bullet, like that. And you can see how that just completely changes the color, and basically it comes with a ton of presets like this, and this is always the basis for my color corrections. So you can see that it just goes through all of them. Like that one. I think for this, I'm probably going to go with uh, that. Yep, and then obviously it has grain with it. I usually keep my grain at about 50%, but you can always change around with that. And you can change around with the strength, obviously. And yeah, there's a bunch of other options that you can play around with, but that is effect number one. Now, effect number two that I'll be showing you is called Time Warp RGB, right over here. And for this, you're going to need Sapphire. But to be fair, for most things, you are going to need Sapphire. It's one of the most common uh, plugins to have. So for this, you're going to create an adjustment layer. And let's, uh, let's put this right on the kill, like about here, maybe a few frames before the kill. And a few frames after the kill something like this and let's put it under our film because that's going to be our basis for the cc so what you're going to do is you're going to press t and this is going to bring up the opacity and you're going to set a keyframe on the kill one before the kill like a few frames before it and one at the end like that and on the keyframes on the outside you're going to set them to zero it's so like that and then you're simply just going to add on Time Warp RGB to that. And then there's a lot of ways that you can use Time Warp RGB. Obviously, you can use it as a kill effect, but you can also use it on your clip and as a, as a transition. So I'll show you what it looks like as a transition. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that like that. And we're just going to drag it over our cinematic. And let's have that second keyframe right on that cinematic. But then, for this, we are just going to make it a little bit shorter. It's uh, really nice and really convenient because you can use it in a lot of situations. And I personally use this effect a lot. So yeah, that's effect number two. Alright, next up we have one, another one of my personal favorites. It's called Shine. And for this, let's create another adjustment layer. And we are actually going to just do like something like this, just split it on the clip. And let's split it like at the end of the clip as well. So we have this thing right here. And now let's go over here and type in shine and it should be under RG trap code. And you're just going to double click on that. And basically what it's going to do is it's just going to have these really cool light rays. And personally, I love using this effect. I use it a lot. You can mess around with the shine opacity like this and basically you can change the color by going to colorize and drop and uh, clicking that drop down arrow right over here and it has all of these presets already or if you want to do it custom you can just click on the colors and just do whatever but here's what some of the presets look like you got mars which is going to be another red one you got some uh green blue another cool one is usa and uh like this one is cool but yeah for this one i'm just gonna do red which is gonna be fire for fading it out let's just add a keyframe for shine opacity and then let's press u on our keyboard so we can see the keyframes and let's go to the end of the clip and let's fade it out to like maybe 
50 or something so it's not completely faded out but it is going to be like quite a bit and then let's con uh, let's highlight both of them and press f9 on it and then let's just do something like this on the graph so yeah that looks really cool i really like the rays and another thing that I really like about this that you can do is uh, you can click on this and you can set the the source point for the rays. You can see how that moves around as I move uh, that. I usually set it for like something in the middle-ish. I think I'm gonna do that. And then this is what it looks like with the time warp RGB. Yeah, and that's effect number three. Next up we have effect number four, which is gonna be called temporal blur. And for this, we're going to make uh, a, a an adjustment layer on a beat. So I think I'm going to do it on that, like, air horn thing. And then end it on this clap. Although, if I were you, I would do it on some, like, basses, because I think that looks better. And we're basically going to go over to our, um, our adjustment layer, and we're going to type in temporal blur just like that it's gonna be under BCC and it's basically just gonna look like this at the first and but I usually crank it down to about one but also if I were you I would also add a shake going in and out of it but also if I were you I I suggest adding a shake going in and out of it otherwise it'll look a little bit choppy but also if you do not have a shake you can also do the time warp RGB going in and out of it which could also kind of help uh, fade it in and out like that and now last up we have uh, effect number five which is called prism and now this is a pretty basic and really easy effect to do you just type in prism the hardest part is literally downloading the plugin which is not hard and yeah you can add this onto the adjustment layer or the clip whichever one works i'm just going to do it onto the clip just to stay a little bit more organized and you can just add on and you can just see how it does that to the edges without it that's what it looks like with it that's what it looks like you can add this onto your kill effect or you can add this on to uh your cinematic so yeah and then this is what it looks like on the cinematic that's what it looks like just kind of does that to the edges and yeah this is what it looks like with all the effects on it and just like that you guys now know a few more effects that can just help spice up your edit if you guys enjoyed anything or learned anything from the video make sure you leave a like and subscribe because not only does it boost the video up in the algorithm but it also just helps me out a lot and yeah i'm out Peace.